this module, uh, we will continue our uh, discussion on the basic commands after looking at uh, what are the different options available for us to do the regular expression and uh, use the different uh, uh, regular expression characters uh, for making very, very powerful uh, uh, searches or very, very powerful uh, replacements. So, uh, regular expressions are uh, used uh, typically in various uh, unix tools and commands and uh, we just saw an example of it being used in the, the set command and the ls command uh, in our previous modules. So, what does a regular expression actually do? Uh, they really try to allow us to match uh, different kinds of uh, uh, input text that is possible. Uh, wherein um, the input text will actually be getting dynamically uh, expanded at runtime, it irrespective of whatever are the contents of that particular uh, uh, location in which that expansion is trying to happen. So, for example, if I try to say uh, that I want to use a regular expression star uh, as we have seen in some of the examples in our previous modules. So, if I say star um, txt. Uh, I would not know at any point in time whether there are two files ending with txt or five files ending with txt or any number of uh, n number of files that is exist ending with txt, right. But on the other hand, whenever I am trying to use that regular expression in my script or in the command line whatever it is, uh, that the star is getting expanded and automatically getting replaced with the contents as it is standing at that instant of time. So, my script or my command uh, when I use the regular expression does not need to change depending on the contents of my uh, directory or the, the pattern where, wherever I am actually trying to use the regular expression for, right. So, the very common regular expressions that are typically used is basically a dot, a dot will match any character. Uh, so, I could have any uh, uh, character in that particular location where I have specified dot in my entire regular expression. So, the open square brackets and the closed square brackets uh, uh, will typically match any one character listed inside the square brackets, right. So, for example, if I say that uh, I want to uh, uh, look at a file name starting with A or B, I will specify that uh, the, the, the file name could be like here uh, I do not have any file that is present here. So, if I for example, say L P star what I am basically trying to tell here is that I want to list all the files with beginning with either L or beginning with either P followed by any number of characters because the star is used. Right. So, it will display to me all the files in my current directory which is either beginning with L or beginning with P. So, that is basically what the square brackets is all about. So, replace any one character which is specified within the square brackets and expand that given regular expression uh, to see what kind of pattern is matching. Then next is basically within a square brackets I specify the caret symbol which uh, which essentially means that uh, whatever char whatever characters are following this particular symbol those characters should not be present in the pattern matching right so this is basically a negation of what the normal open square brackets closed square brackets that we discussed here so it's basically the negation of the behavior of this particular regular expression so if you see this here if i specify it like this it will display to me all files and directories which is not beginning with L and P. So, whatever you saw here as the contents previously for my uh, the previous invocation of the regular expression, you will not find the same contents here because the negation has actually been asked for saying that the first character should neither be a L nor be a P in this particular regular expression. So, uh, on the other hand, if I use the caret symbol without uh, putting it within the square brackets, then that means the, the pattern that is following the caret symbol should be at the beginning of the line for it to match the regular expression. Dollar similarly would mean the end of the line 
and star would uh, as we have already uh, seen a few examples in our previous modules uh, and also in the, the, in, the, in the previous example that I showed you here, uh, star would typically mean 0 or more times plus would mean that 1 or more times and question mark would mean 0 or more 1 time. So, question mark here would essentially mean that uh, there should be only one character that, that is present in that particular location. So, regular expressions as I have been telling you, it is a very, very powerful, uh, very, very useful tool uh, for doing lot of very complex tasks and it also is very handy for us uh, when scripting and uh, more details of the regular expressions can be found in this particular uh, URL site. Uh, this is just a sample uh, and uh, there are uh, really lot of other sites uh, which also talks in detail about regular expressions. Um, so, we would strongly suggest that you actually go through some of those sites as well and then get very comfortable with the regular expressions because uh, you will find it really very, very handy uh, going forward. Now, coming down to the next uh, 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 basic concept that we will be talking about is what is called as a symbolic uh, link. Uh, so, as we were talking in the initial module, a link in uh, the Unix parlance is something very similar to what we actually call as a shortcut to the desktop uh, in the windows world. right? So, uh, typically for those of us who come from the windows background, we uh, refer to the uh, uh, something called as a shortcut, wherein you want to really have a, uh, a shortcut created typically in our desktop screen for a file or a directory or some content that is actually available somewhere in our hard disk uh, in a very uh, embedded uh, location. right? So, what we mean by embedded location is uh, maybe it is actually available in lot of uh, uh, depth in my entire uh, file system and I do not want to really waste my time in trying to click on or trying to migrate to each of those subdirectory locations uh, before accessing my content. So, likewise uh, the same behavior of a shortcut in windows is uh, what is called as actually a link in uh, the Linux world. A symbolic link is basically a special file uh, which is actually just a reference to the name of another uh, file or a directory. right? So, this is typically used for reducing the disk space uh, 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 occupied and as well as a complexity when two files is actually going to have the same content. So, unnecessarily uh, wasting the disk space uh, if I really try to have it as two different files, uh, only one file will be stored and the second name which uh, with which I want to access the same content uh, will be created as a link to my uh, original file with in which I, I have my content. right? So, whenever I use uh, uh, symbolic link, uh, uh, if, if, uh, those links are typically uh, denoted uh, in the ls minus l output as uh, hyphen followed by the greater than symbol uh, and then uh, followed by the whatever is a linked uh, file name. So, if we actually use the gnu ls, ls version of the command, it also will display it in a different color. So, how do I create a symbolic link? Uh, I specify um, use the ln command and then specify minus s option for creating a soft link, uh, wherein I specify first the file name, uh, whatever is the file name to which I want the link to be created and then follow it up with the uh, link name. So, uh, the link name will be the name uh, which will be created as a pointer to the original file name that is actually created here. So, if I want to create a file, uh, create a link with the same name as the file name, uh, then I just do not specify the link name explicitly, I just specify the file name alone. So, in this particular case, uh, there is a file called readme.txt in my parent directory, that is the reason why we have actually used dot dot slash readme.txt and with this command, since I, the, the, com, the command has not been given the link name explicitly, what is going to happen is that there is going to be a link called readme.txt that is going to be created in the current directory. Uh, with the same name. right? So, to create multiple links uh, uh, at once uh, in a given directory, I could actually use uh, uh, multiple file name arguments uh, followed finally by the directory in which I want to create the link. So, each of these files will actually be created as a link in the, direct, in the directory that I have actually mentioned finally in my ln uh, uh, command line. And uh, for removing a link, uh, since the link 
is also a special type of a file as we saw in one of our previous modules. Uh, I just need to use the standard rm command that we would use for a typical uh, 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 file. So, like I use the rm command for a typical file, I use the rm command for the link name also and then if I use rm followed by the link name, uh, that particular uh, uh, command, uh, that particular file will be getting deleted from my uh, file system uh, hierarchy. So, uh, another type of a link is basically what is called as a hard link, uh, where uh, uh, the default behavior for the ln command is actually created as a hard link only. Now, the hard link is, uh, is a like a regular file, but the contents are actually getting pointed to the same physical contents of the original source file. right? So, uh, the difference between a hard link and a soft link is, if I uh, basically remove the original file, uh, as far as the hard link contents are concerned, there will be no impact to the hard link contents and uh, the contents will be finally removed uh, only if there are no file names that are actually pointing to the contents in when, when, when they have been created as a hard link. Right. So, in this case uh, what I could really actually try to do here is that, uh, when I use the soft link, because they are going to be using the inodes in a file system. So, inode is basically the interface that I really have uh, within a file system. Uh, so, every file that I have uh, created uh, will actually have a, a, a inode data structure inside the file system. So, inode as uh, we would have seen in our file system module uh, as part of the initial uh, OS uh, description stands for index node and uh, there will be a file, uh, there will be an inode that will be actually available um, for every file that is created. So, this inode will have metadata associated with the file as well as uh, the pointer to the data blocks in which data data disk blocks in which the data associated with this file is actually uh, stored inside right so in case of a soft link uh, what is actually happening is that uh, uh, i will have a soft link with a different file name uh, pointing uh, which actually has a different inode uh, created whereas when i actually have a hard link uh, created the hard link is also a link pointing to the same inode, uh, wherein the number of links is actually incremented, uh, which is presented, uh, which is one of the information that is actually presented inside the inode. Uh, and so, if I remove the hard link uh, name, unless and until the number of references in that inode comes to zero, the contents of that file, uh, which is actually pointed to by that uh, pointed by that inode, will never be deleted by the file system. Right. So, uh, that is basically the core difference between a soft link and, and a hard link. So, whenever uh, we need uh, any kind of uh, additional details on how to use a particular command uh, option, uh, there are uh, uh, typical options available either as minus h or minus l on almost all the Unix commands. So, if you really use the minus h option or the minus l option. Uh, it will give you details about how many options are there, what each of those options uh, mean and uh, what kind of usage are required for each of those options, all those details will be given to you. So, for example, if you really want to find out uh, how to use a command called let us say, it displays the different kinds of options that is available here. and uh, tells me for each of those options, what is the corresponding explanations of what those each of those options really mean. So, in this particular case, the minus h actually uh, stands for a human readable format. So, likewise, there will be some examples, uh, some minimum examples of the, of the Unix commands, wherein uh, uh, the minus h option would be used for doing some other uh, implementation of a specific feature within the command, but predominantly if you see the almost all the commands will have uh, the minus h or the minus help option to give you more details about what that particular command is doing and what are the features of the individual uh, uh, options available within the command. 
So, on the other hand, if you want to know uh, details about a command, uh, the way it has to be used, uh, the what is the behavior of the command, what kind of error messages would possibly come from the command and all that, you have what is called as a man command. So, if you can just type the man followed by the keyword, whatever uh, uh, command or the, uh, the key that, I that you want more details on, it will display you the complete uh, set of help related information for that particular argument that you have given to the man command, right. So, it, it tells you uh, what are the different ways of using it, how each of those options or arguments uh, changes the behavior of the command, what kind of error messages you could typically expect to get from the command and also what are other related uh, uh, commands uh, to the one that is actually getting displayed right now. So, it, it is actually extremely useful uh, for us as a sort of a cheat sheet to have a quick reference whenever we have to uh, sort of recapitulate on what are the different options available, the behavior of each of those options and so on. Similarly, you also have uh, the info command, uh, which gives you more details uh, uh, as compared to uh, what a man command actually uh, tells you. And uh, uh, it also will tell you the associated commands that is actually available uh, and any kind of a relationship or dependency of the given command. Uh, with those associated commands. So, essentially it gives you more details uh, about how to use a command, what is the behavior, what are the other related commands, how do they behave and so on and so forth. So, man and info are typically two useful commands uh, that will give you additional information on how a particular uh, command could be used by you, uh, including the options, including the different kind of arguments that it might take and behave differently. Thank you. Mm -hmm.